Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Sharon Gaber's first State of the University Address. We appreciate your attendance and thank you for being here today. I'm Mary Humphreys. I'm president of the University of Toledo Faculty Senate. You just viewed the premiere of a video that was uh, produced by the University Marketing and Communications Department for the benefit of prospective students. Although it's a big task, we think that the video did a great job of capturing the breadth of our programs, our people, and our passions. As you know, 22 months ago, UT, UT turned a new page with the arrival of President Gaber. In her brief time here, she has created a culture of collaboration and shared governance that has set the foundation for a successful future. As the university celebrates its accomplishments and faces its challenges, it will do so under the leadership of a president who understands the importance of providing the best possible educational experience for our students. I'm honored today to introduce the president of the University of Toledo, Dr. Sharon Gaber. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mary. Good afternoon and welcome, everyone. Members of the University of Toledo Board of Trustees, elected officials, community, and union leaders, UT faculty, clinicians, physicians, and staff, students, alumni, and donors, our neighbors and fans of Rocket Nation, thanks to you all, not just for being here, but for the ongoing support so many of you show for the University of Toledo. 22 months ago, I assumed the role of president, and you were asked to place your trust in new leadership. You watched, you weighed in, you collaborated. Sometimes you cheered, 
Other times you didn't. <laughs> Sometimes you even picketed, signs and all, and you do have the right to free speech and I support that. More than anything, you gave me a chance and for that I'm deeply grateful. This afternoon, I wanna help answer the question I'm frequently asked, where can we expect UT to be in the next five to 10 years? Today, I'll pull some of the pieces together for you, explain what we've been working on, highlight some of our successes, tell you about some new initiatives and some challenges we're facing. Most importantly, I wanna share with you my vision, really our vision for the university's future our future. Little by little, our individual actions are collectively and cumulatively leading to significant progress. When I first arrived at UT, I spent a lot of time listening and observing. It was clear from the start that we needed to begin with some basic fundamentals. We needed a solid foundation on which to build. We needed to regain our footing to renew our confidence and we needed to open our doors to fresh ideas and new practices while still honoring our traditions and our tremendous strengths, especially our people. I'm very happy to report that we've made considerable progress in laying that foundation one step at a time. While some of the change has been difficult, I believe I was asked to join the University of Toledo to foster and encourage change. I've only been able to do that thanks to the collaboration of literally thousands of others. The changes we're making together are meant to help ensure the long-term sustainability of this university. And that means putting the needs of our students first. Strengthening our foundation meant establishing goals and developing plans that focused on our students. And it meant shoring up our finances. We established five key goals that helped focus our progress. These goals range from raising our national reputation to increasing our enrollment, fundraising, and externally funded research, while ensuring that a UT degree remains affordable. To move toward these goals, we put four major plans at the top of our agenda. A diversity plan, an enrollment plan, a multiple campus master plan, and a strategic plan. All of these were necessary steps that are bringing us closer to our goals. With each step, we increase our momentum, and that momentum translates into significant progress. By reducing spending and better managing our expenses, and by increasing our fundraising, we be began addressing the multi-million dollar shortfall that we faced. This has been a difficult task, but we've made good progress. Through a combination of spending reductions, new revenue, and cost avoidance, we've achieved $50 million in savings. That's about 13% of the general fund budget. This stemmed from realigning our executive team merging 13 college, excuse me, 16 colleges into 13, implementing a hiring freeze, instituting temporary holds on open positions, and identifying numerous other ways to reduce our expenditures or generate revenue. This includes $1 million in benefits savings generated through a first ever dependent verification assessment associated with our healthcare coverage. Clearly, growing our enrollment and improving retention are also important steps in addressing the budget. As many of you know, last fall we increased enrollment by 2.2%. This was for the first time in six years. We also increased retention by three percentage points. I'm also proud to say that we've dramatically increased fundraising. Over the past 22 months, I traveled to 17 cities throughout the country to personally meet with alumni and donors. I think it's vital that they hear directly from me about our vision for the university. Alumni and donor engagement is crucial in helping us to accomplish our long-term goals. I'm happy to report that our alumni relations team has doubled alumni giving, which had been less than 3% just two years ago. 
And our overall fundraising this year is already up by 69%, which is a nine-year high. It totals more than $17.2 million year to date. A very important part of our reputation, both as an institution of higher education and as a provider of health care services, is linked to our health professions programs. We celebrated the 10th 10 year anniversary of UT's merger with the former Medical University of Ohio last year. Our College of Medicine and Life Sciences is crucial to meeting the health needs of our community. The historic partnership we entered into with ProMedica will serve both our students, our physicians, and the community at large. The academic affiliation is doing exactly what we'd hoped, strengthening the education we give our medical students and residents while creating a more desirable environment for graduates to practice medicine. We already have attracted five nationally known department chairs and faculty leaders to the College of Medicine and Life Sciences since this agreement was announced. And we were excited to learn that on match day, 27 fourth year College of Medicine students will pursue their residencies right here in Toledo. This is a record number, and we're quite sure that we'll continue to break records every year. It's great to keep this talent in the region because it will help us to fill the need for more physicians in our community. Furthermore, changes in the healthcare landscape led us to carefully consider the future of our hospital. And earlier this year, we announced the decision to keep UTMC as a teaching hospital. We're happy to have this gem of a hospital to help educate future healthcare providers, including physicians, pharmacists, nurses, and allied health professionals. Our UTMC team has been working hard to improve patient care. This past year, they were recognized nationally by Consumer Reports for reducing central line infection rates in the ICU by 55%. Research is another significant part of our reputation. This too is an area we needed to enhance and we've taken steps to improve. We've su successfully increased externally funded research. In fact, this year, new competitive research awards are already 45% higher than the prior year. We're very proud of our many researchers. Just last month, we formally recognized UT's top researchers, those with grants in the millions of dollars. The university has 471 faculty and physicians who have brought in more than $225 million in sponsored research over the past five years. One of those researchers is Dr. Rafael Garcia Mata. He was awarded three back-to-back -back grants from the National Institutes of Health for groundbreaking research in cancer. That's almost unheard of, and we're proud to have him in the UT family. Thank you. <laughs> the fact that we offer research opportunities for undergraduates also helps attract many highly motivated students. We have undergraduate students conducting research alongside esteemed faculty in fields as diverse as medicine, biology, astronomy, criminal justice, and the environment. I'd also like to give a shout out to junior James Windsor and senior Nick Delaney, who both made national news with their discoveries in astronomy. We've also introduced new policies to better support student success and enliven our campuses, like requiring second year undergraduate students to live on main campus beginning in fall 2017. Thanks to our faculty, we'll be rolling out a 15 week semester in the fall to provide students with more flexibility for success in the classroom and with experiential learning opportunities. Thanks also go out to Gina Roberts and her team in Rocket Solutions Central for enhancing student services by drastically reducing the amount of time that students and their families are put on hold when they call the campus helpline. This has gone from approximately 40 minutes a year ago 
down to three minutes or less today. <laughs> And to continually work toward reducing the time it takes students to graduate, we just signed an agreement with Owens Community College called Rocket Express, which enables students to begin their education at Owens and then transfer seamlessly to UT later on. This dual admission program complements other existing partnerships that we formed that save students both time and money, like our 3 plus 2 programs and College Credit Plus. We've also increased our engagement with the city of Toledo to offer students internships in local government. Congratulations to our current Toledo Talent Keeps Toledo Great interns, Esther Heilman, Justin Murray, and Sai Kumar Naini. We thank them for serving our community. We have significantly increased communications at the university, and we've strengthened our marketing to better tell our story. I've begun holding breakfast with the president sessions for faculty and staff and lunch with the president meetings for students. I enjoy hearing their ideas and answering questions. Other UT leaders are working to hold similar meetings. I want to tell you that our new administration values connecting with our faculty, staff, and students, so approachability and accessibility have become new hallmarks in handling day-to-day -day communications. I gave more than 125 speeches last year, meeting with community groups, state legislators, area high school students, church groups, and professional organizations to help spread the word about UT's great progress. In addition to all of these steps and recognizing the importance of our people, we've also worked to improve professional development. We launched the Leadership Institute through the Provost's Office to help groom next generation leaders in higher education. Plus, we established the Presidential Faculty Fellowship, currently filled by Dr. Melissa Gregory. We've listened. We can clap. <laughs> We've listened to our staff and we're planning to provide our professional staff more opportunities to grow as well. And we've, yes. And we've created a new tradition to celebrate newly tenured or promoted faculty. In collaboration with the library, we place a significant book of their choosing with a nameplate honoring their success in Carlson Library. We're, <laughs> okay, I'll take a sip. <laughs> We're pleased to report that we took a step forward in some of our national rankings. Recently, both our College of Law and the Judith Herb College of Education moved up several slots in U.S. News and World Report rankings. Our Master's in Nursing ranks number 11 in the U.S and our surgical residency program ranks 14th in the nation. Just last week as well, UTMC gained national recognition, placing among the top 100 hospitals in LGBTQ healthcare equality by the Human Rights Campaign. And you know I can't talk about all of these wins without mentioning our rockets. We're really proud that our women's basketball team won the MAC championship and earned a trip to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Congratulations to Coach Trisha Cullop and her team. And UT football ended its season 9-4 and four with an appearance at the Camellia Bowl. Coach Jason Candle and his team have done an outstanding job. Our student athletes are winners in the classroom as well. Our 377 intercollegiate athletes achieved a school record with an average GPA of 3.235 last year. This earned them the MAC Institutional Academic Achievement Award. Thanks go to Erica Lavender for helping them to achieve excellence in their studies.
Let me give a shout out to our students for their tremendous community service. Our student athletes donated nearly 2,500 hours in community service during 2016-17. And less than a couple of weeks ago, more than 1,500 UT students worked at 35 different job sites to show their appreciation to the surrounding community. They performed 4,000 hours of community service for the big event. They did everything from cleaning eaves and raking leaves to picking up trash in neighborhood parks. Thanks to the event's director, senior Joey Leach, for coordinating these volunteers. Just these two groups of students alone perform 6,500 hours of community service. And that doesn't include the many other thousands of hours that our other students, through Greek activities and campus-wide events like Rocketthon, our 13-hour dance marathon that they contribute. Finally, we also took steps to honor our past. Last year, we dedicated this student union in memory of Dr. Lance Thompson the university's first full-time African-American professor and vice president. Dr. Thompson served UT for 55 years. We also continue honoring our veterans. UT remains one of the top military-friendly universities in the nation. This past Veterans Day, we unveiled new blue and gold star memorial markers on campus to pay tribute to individuals who are enlisted in the armed forces or who have been deployed as well as to recognize families whose loved ones lost their lives in active duty. As you've heard, we're taking many steps, some big and some small, and we're making great progress. Combined, our individual accomplishments are collectively producing major enhancements for UT, creating more dynamic campuses and increased engagement among our stakeholders. I bet many of these steps you've heard about or witnessed firsthand. I want to be clear that I do not expect this progress to slow down. In fact, I have a few announcements I'd like to share now to demonstrate that UT will continue on this upward trajectory. The first of these announcements is that we know our story is being heard by more people. Fiscal year to date, UT has been in the news more than 23,000 times, including coverage in both local and national media. That's an increase of 30% over the prior year. Second, Moody's, as well as Standard & Poor's, have both reaffirmed the university's rating with a stable outlook. This rating not only reflects our progress, it also gives us assurance that our rating is not likely to change anytime soon. That's external validation that our foundation is solid. Third, the university is completing an economic impact study. As a vital contributor to the Toledo metropolitan area, UT plays a key role in generating income, developing human capital, and supporting the region's economy. Thanks go to Drs. Oleg Smirnov and Benga Ajalor for leading this study. When the full study is released in the coming weeks, you'll see that our community impact is in the billions. We're extremely pleased to be an anchor institution in Toledo and this region. Stay tuned for more details on this. Fourth, I'm also happy to report that our strategic plan is nearly complete. It will chart a new course for this great university. A draft of the plan will soon be made available for comments, and then will go before the Board of Trustees in June. Thanks to its co-chairs, Drs. Lori Denabeel and Anthony Quinn. Fifth, <laughs> Fifth, in an effort to ensure that we adhere to the highest of ethical standards, we're launching mandatory Title IX and ethics training for staff and faculty beginning in July. And finally, I want to share that we are creating an ad hoc task force on sexual assault awareness and prevention 
to compare our practices to best practices at other universities. Dr. Amy Thompson and Valerie Walston will co-chair this committee. Student <laughs> Student safety is a top priority and we will continue enforcing zero tolerance of any type of abuse. Along with all of this great news, as part of my commitment to open and honest communication, I also have to tell you that the University of Toledo is facing significant fiscal challenges, like many universities. Though we certainly are better poised for the future than we were a year ago, these challenges are serious. We've weathered several years of tuition freezes imposed by the state. Now we've been told to plan for an additional two-year freeze. The governor also has proposed that Ohio's public universities be required to help cover the co textbook costs over $300, which would cost UT nearly $14 million annually. Because most of us can't remember a time when budget wasn't an issue, it would be easy to ignore the significance of this, but this is very serious. We're facing decisions that will impact lives in our day-to-day -day university operations. The reality is, when we receive less financial support from the state, we need to find innovative ways to move forward to continue providing the same high-quality education that our students deserve with less money. Over the past few months, we've asked our campus community for input and suggestions to help contain costs. And we've received some great ideas. Based on feedback from faculty, staff, and our students, we're already making changes to help with expense management. Even with these changes, we can expect further action to help reduce costs. More steps will need to be taken, and those will not be easy steps. Another significant challenge we're facing is that our six-year graduation rate is going to go down before it goes up. We know that there are some students who joined us five six years ago who were not as prepared for college as more recent students, and that will reflect in our graduation rates. Unfortunately, graduation rates will decrease our state performance funding and impact our rankings. Clearly, we're working to improve our graduation rates going forward. Now that I've talked about many of the steps we've taken to make big change and talked about the challenges we face, I want to get back to the question that I posed at the beginning. Where will the University of Toledo be in the next five to ten years? On so many levels, we're an institution of opportunity. Let's think about that for a moment. Each and every year, UT attracts a diverse cross-section of students some of whom either could not afford college or never considered going to college. First generation students, underrepresented students, a degree from UT can make all the difference and that's an exceptional value all the way around. We provide a fantastic education at an affordable price. UT's tuition is the second lowest in the state among public research universities. We have long been a place of promise where the doors of higher education are open wide to those who want to work hard to achieve excellence to have a better life. As cited in the New York Times, UT is currently ranked as the top institution in Northwest Ohio for income mobility. Nearly 40% of all UT students who graduated in spring 2016 earned an advanced degree, such as a master's degree, a PhD, an MD, or a JD. We have significantly more graduate and professional students than other universities in our region. Further, the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services shows 76% of UT baccalaureate graduates find employment within the state of Ohio in the first year after graduation. In fact, one in three of all UT graduates remains in the Toledo metropolitan region. We're proud that Toledo is our namesake and that our talent is choosing to stay close to home.
A UT education promises the daughters and sons of plant workers and store clerks that they can one day manage the plant, they can own the store if they want to, they can build the career of their choice, they can lead. We're proud of the progress we have made, yet we hold strong expectations for our future. So I'm here to tell you today that the state of the University of Toledo is strong, and we have the potential to be even stronger. Currently, <laughs> currently there are 14 public universities in the state. I want you to picture a map of Ohio. Near the center is Ohio's flagship land-grant university, Ohio State, in Columbus. Anchoring the southern region of the state is another formidable public research university, the University of Cincinnati. Now think about a northern counterpart. Think about UT's location near Lake Erie. The comprehensiveness of our academic programs, our increased emphasis on research, our improving national rankings, and our exceptional faculty, physicians, and staff. Those are the pieces we have today. When we add the improvements we're making, our academically better prepared students, our commitment to excellence in our academics and in our people, our financial stability, increased research expenditures, and increased fundraising, higher enrollment, and higher graduation and retention rates. When you put all of those pieces together, you have envisioned the University of Toledo in five to 10 years a highly desirable, sought after, nationally ranked, comprehensive public research university anchoring the northern part of this state. That's where we can be. And that's why I'm proud to be the 17th president of the University of Toledo. I want to call on all of you to work with me to write the next chapter in UT's history. We've accomplished a great deal in the past 22 months. Step by step, we're charting a bold new legacy of excellence, one that exceeds even our most accomplished days. The University of Toledo is a formidable institution. Over the decades, it has merged, grown, survived, and thrived. As we contemplate today and look to the future, I see only promise. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are barriers. But for every challenge and every barrier, there's promise, opportunities, and advancement. We are so lucky to have an institution with so much diversity. Diversity in thought, diversity in academic offerings, diversity in research. We have so much more to do. Together, we're building a stronger UT. We will continue to change the lives of the people who entrust us with their educations. And we will continue to advance knowledge in the world. Our transformation is and only will be possible with all of us working together. Please join me in this journey. Thank you all and go Rockets. Thank you, Dr. Gaber. I'd like to invite all of you to join us for some ice cream to celebrate our recent success. And I'd also like to encourage you to share your ideas uh, for the next steps here at the university by uh, writing on the various posters that you see throughout the, the auditorium. So please feel free to give us our ideas or your comments. Thank you very much for coming this afternoon. Have a nice afternoon.